Hello students, welcome to the Income Tax Law and Practice class with me Adela Samuel, Head Department of Accounting and Finance. Today's topic is again going to be the continuation of perquisites. Okay, so today's topic is going to be the perquisites taxable for all employees. So we have already seen, started off with this topic in the last class, but we will do the, a continuation of the same topic. So first we had started off with the rent free accommodation, which is the first type of perquisite taxable for all the employees. We've already seen the topic and we finished a few sums on rent free accommodation. The second type of uh, perquisites taxable for all employees is obligation of employee met by the employer under section 17 subsection 2 4. So what does this uh, second uh, uh, perquisite mean? Any amount paid by or reimbursed by the employer, which is to be paid by the employee, is taxable in the hands of the employee. So any amount that the person who is working in the organization has to pay is paid or it's reimbursed by his boss, then that comes as part of obligation of employee met by the employer. In that case, the amount so spent by the employer will be taxable in the hands of the employee. So what are the different types of uh, expenses that the employer can pay for the employee? Example, gas, electricity paid by the employer, children's education bill or tuition fees can be paid by the employer, income tax or professional tax paid by the employer, or domestic servant, that means a housemaid at home, uh, can be that uh, the, that person's pay can also be paid by the employer. Then, employee's life insurance premium can be paid by the employer. So, all these expenses, if it is paid or reimbursed by the employer, which is which has to be actually paid by the employee, then those amounts will be taxed in the hands of the employee. Third type is the amount paid by the employer for the life assurance of the employee. So if there is any sum of money paid by the employer to the employee for the life assurance that the employee has taken, then that amount will be taxable. There are a few exception cases here, except for the following, which is not applicable. Certain uh, exception cases are there like recognized provident fund or approved superannuation fund, group insurance scheme, employee state insurance scheme, fidelity guarantee scheme. All these are exception cases when it comes to uh, payment of life insurance policy of the employee. The fourth type is use of movable assets rule uh, 3, 7 and 7. Okay, so the use of mobile assets. So if there is any computer or laptop given to the employee, they are not taxable. For office purpose, they will be given for the employee. So that cannot be taxable. If any other mo mobile assets are given, then 10% of the asset value is taxed. That is the rule. In case of the fifth one, transfer of mobile assets under section 378. So in this case, what happens? If a mobile asset is sold by an employer to the employee at a nominal rate, the value of perquisite is as follows. The previous cases, it's a mobile asset that is given to the employees. Here, uh, the asset itself is sold to the employee. Okay, so that is there is a difference between the two, fourth uh, point and the fifth point. So in this case, uh, what amount will be taxed? So first case, if they, they are selling a computer and or an electronic item, in that case, the actual cost minus 50% of cost as depreciation for a year on the basis of the written down value method. So whatever amount you're buying it in, actual cost minus 50% of the cost has to be minus as depreciation. That will be the value of the mobile asset. Second type is suppose they are selling a mo motor car. Motor car again 
what is the value of the perquisite actual cost minus 20% as depreciation for the year on the basis of again written down value method motor car then if there is any other asset apart from electronic items or computer or motor car any other items is being sold to the employee then in that case how do you calculate actual cost minus 10% of depreciation for each year on the straight line method on the straight line method so there is a difference uh, between the other two computer and motor car other assets 10% on the straight line method so this you have to remember next is sixth factor is gifts vouchers or tokens according to rule 374 if the employee is given gifts or vouchers or tokens or cash or anything convertible to money for a ceremonial occasion then that gift worth up to rupees 5000 is not taxable more than 5000 it will be taxed fully okay so the so any kind of a gift that is got by the employee from his employer less than 5000 not taxable more than 5000 fully taxable seventh factor is expense on credit card rule 375 so any expense charged to a credit card provided by the employer paid or reimbursed by the employer then the value of the perquisite is calculated as follows so if your credit card uh, amount is being paid by your employer okay then this rule will apply so how do you calculate the value of the perquisite expense incurred by the employer minus the expense for official use if he is if the some part of the money is used for official purpose that has to be minus and then amount received or recovered from the employee again that has to be minus the remaining will be the value of perquisite i'll repeat it again any expense incurred by the employer minus the expense for official use minus the amount received or recovered from the employee that has to be minus that will be the value of the perquisite the eighth rule is free food and non alcohol beverages according to rule 373 so if free food or non alcohol beverages are given to the employers the value of perquisite is as follows if it is given to the employees by the employer then uh, the value is calculated as follows amount spent by the employer minus the amount recovered from the employee so how much ever value they are spending the employer is spending minus uh, of, of, of amount that the employee is spending that you have to minus that will be the value of perquisite suppose if the employee is not spending anything he is getting everything free of cost then the entire amount spent by the employer will be the value of perquisite if suppose he is paying 1 or 2 rupees for the uh, free stuff that he is getting that amount has to be minus and remaining will be taxable okay then the free food is not taxable for the following cases like tea and snacks provided in the working hours or free free food in remote areas remote areas if they serve free food then that will not be taxable and then the third condition is free food or coupons for food given inside office premises or specific joints is exempted up to rupees 50 per meal if meal is not more than 50 rupees the excess amount is taxable so in this in this case in the third case what they say is suppose they provide free food or they provide coupons uh with, where food will be provided inside the office campus or in a particular joint in the place where they say that the food will be offered in that place an exemption they will get is 50 rupees per meal but if the meal is more than 50 rupees then the excess amount will be taxable till 50 rupees it will not be taxable more than 50 rupees you are you are going to eat a meal then that will be taxable okay so this is the fifth uh, uh, sorry eighth condition that is available under perquisites that are taxable for all the employees the ninth one is sweat equity shares sweat equity shares is issued by a company to the employees at free of cost or at a concessional rate okay so any employee who is getting a share 
uh, free of cost or at a concessional rate that is called as a sweat equity share. Uh, how do you calculate this value of perquisite? It is the fair market value of the share on the date of exercise of opinion or minus the amount actually paid by the employee. Say for example, he is getting a uh, one share for 100 rupee each. That means he's getting, he is getting a free of cost uh, share for 100 rupees. And if suppose he is paying some 50 rupees to get that share, that has to be minus and the remaining 50 will be taxed. If he is getting it as free of cost, then the entire 100 rupees will be taxed. That is the condition under sweat equity shares. The tenth one is interest free or concessional loan from the employer. If the employer provides loan without interest or at a concessional rate, it uh, rate his uh, to his employees, the value of perks is so if any loan without any interest is given to the employee or if it is given a loan is given at a very concessional rate to his employees, then value of perk is being calculated as follows. Amount of interest as per State Bank of India for a year. If any interest paid by the employee, it should be reduced from that amount. If the loan amount is not exceeding rupees 20,000, it would not be charged. That means what, what they actually say here is, uh, what is the value of perk? It is the amount of interest that is charged according to uh, State Bank of India for a year. So if you get any uh, loan from the employer, according to the State Bank of India rules, whatever amount of interest is charged in that bank, that, will, the, that amount would be charged here also. Uh, if suppose any interest is paid by the employee, then that amount has to be reduced from the value of perk and the remaining will be taxed. Now, if the loan amount is not exceeding rupees 20,000, it will not be charged. That means there will not be any tax. The next concept that we are going to study is the perquisites taxable only for specified employees. This is the third situation that is present under perquisites. It is given according to section 17 to 3 rule 3. So some perquisites are taxable only in the hands of specific employees. So who are these specific employees? They are the director of an employer company, shareholders of employer company holding 20% or more voting shares, and any other employee whose salary income exceeds rupees 50,000. So these people will be considered as specific employees. So the following are the taxable in the hands of specific employees. Number one is motor car or other conveyances. Motor car or other conveyances. So under motor car itself, we have a lot of rules which you need to remember. So if this person is a specified employee and he's given a motor car or any other conveyance to travel, then in that case, he will be taxable. He will have to be taxed for the motor car that he is using. If the employee is given a car or any other vehicle for private use by the employer, it's taxable in the hands of the employee. So any car is given to the employee, then it, that will be taxable. The value of perk, how do we calculate the value of perk? Depending on the conditions available. First condition is if the car is owned or hired by the employer, car is owned or hired by the employer, then in that case, and it is also going to be used for official purpose, it is not taxable at all. If the car is owned by the employer and given for official purpose, the amount will not be taxable. Under the motor car case, the second uh, uh, condition is that if the car is owned by the employer and it's used for private purpose only, it's given to the employee for his private purpose, then how do we calculate the value of work? Uh, actual expense that is running and maintenance expense plus the driver's salary if there is a driver for him plus 10% of depreciation on the cost of the car which will be given to you in the sum. So actual expense plus driver's expense plus 10% of 
depreciation on the cost of the car then minus the amount recovered from the employee so if it is given free of cost then the amount of recovery from the employee will not be there if they are suppose they are paying it in a concessional rate uh, if the employee is paying some amount of money that has to be minus from the expense that will be the value of perk for example i am an employee and i am working in a company i, I am given a car uh, for my personal use uh sometimes it might be given free of cost to me or sometimes i might be paying some 500 or 1000 rupees as a, as some concessional rate to my boss so how do i calculate this whatever expense i have incurred in running and maintaining the car plus my driver salary plus 10% of depreciation on the car cost will be added and then this 500 or 1000 rupees that i'm giving back to my employer that has to be minus if you minus that the value of perk that i am using or i am getting a perquisite that i am getting will be taxed the value of perk will be taxed do you understand this next one is car taken on lease and used for employee private purpose so the previous one is the car was owned by the employer now the car is taken on a lease and it is used for the employee's private purpose so how do we calculate this actual expense plus the driver salary minus the amount recovered from the employee a 10% of depreciation will not come because the car is being taken on lease that alone will differ so this again you'll have to remember carefully the next one is if the car is owned or hired by the employer and it is used for both official and private purpose then how would you find the value of perquisite so in that case there are two options you need to remember if the expense is borne by the employer it's used for both official and private purpose and it is uh, owned or hired by the employer so two things you need to remember under this if the expense is going to be borne by the employer three conditions if it is a small car 1800 rupees per month is taxed it's a large car 2400 per month is taxed if the driver is provided 900 per month will be taxed that will be the value of perquisite if suppose the expense is borne by the employee then in that case if it's a small car 600 large car 900 if the driver is again provided again 900 per month will be the value of perquisite that amount will be taxed uh, on the hands of the employee so this is the a uh, next condition that you need to remember if it is hired and or owned by the employer and it is going to be used for both the purpose official or private purpose in the previous cases we saw whether it's going to be just official then you have certain conditions if it is just private there are few conditions now the condition is it is going to be used for both the purpose then in that case this is going to be your value of perquisite The fifth situation under the motor car rule is the car is owned by the employee and the expenses are met by the employer. So here it is different. All the previous cases where, is where the employer is having the car and giving it to the employee. Now the case is where the car is actually owned by the employee himself, but all the expenses will be taken care by the employer. So again, here two things you need to remember: if the car is used for official purpose. Uh, then it's not taxable but a log book should be maintained the car is used for official purpose it's not taxable at all but a log book has to be maintained that is the rule now if the car is used for both the purposes then in that case what is the amount you have to charge as value of the car actual expense minus if it is a small car 1800 per month big car 2400 per month with a driver it is 900 per month will have to be minused from the actual expense you minus it and then you get the value of the car as a perquisite so second condition is where the car is owned by the employee it's used for both the purposes and the expense is going to be met by the employer so actual expense minus the rates will give you the value of car as a perquisite the final one under the motor car is 
other values uh, sorry other vehicles other than car owned by the employee and the expense is met by the employer other vehicles owned by the employee and expense is met by the employer so in this case expense actual expense minus 900 per month will be the value of perquisite that is given so apart from a motor car any other vehicle if the employee is owning and the expenses are met by the employer then this is how you have to calculate the value of per actual expense minus 900 per month the second type of uh, perquisite that is taxable for specific employees is free domestic servant so if the employer provides household servants like sweeper or a gardener or a watchman or a cook to the employee then the value of perquisite is as follows so actual amount spent by the employer minus the amount paid by the employee will be the value of perquisite for example i am an employee and i have a servant at home who is cooking for me and uh, the the salary for the cook is being paid by my employer by my boss then in that case how, how that is a perk that is given to me so uh, how how it will be charged the actual amount that the employer is giving me to pay my servant minus the amount that i am spending to pay my servant will be the value of perquisite suppose my servant pays 2000 rupees per month uh, and the company is giving me 1500 and i have to put some 500 and pay 2000 to my servant in that case to 1500 minus the 500 that i am putting will be 1000 rupees that will be charged as a perquisite the third type of perquisite that is taxable for a specified employee is free supply of gas electricity energy water etc if the employer provides employee with these services free of cost then the amount incurred by the employer to procure the service is the value of the perk if the employee spends any amount on these perks then that amount should be subtracted and the remaining will be the value of the perquisite so just like uh, any other case so if there is any free supply of gas or electricity or water supply given to you given to the employees by the employer how much ever they are giving minus the amount that you are going to spend along uh, extra apart from whatever you are getting from your employee any amount that you are spending extra will have to be minus and the remaining will be taxable as a perquisite the fourth uh, perquisite is free education facility for the employees children so if educational institution is owned by the employer and the free education is provided the value of perquisite is as follows again two factors you need to remember if the cost of education or similar education institution is not more than 1000 per month per child the value is going to be nil so if you are going to spend 1000 rupees per month per child on cost of education which is borne by the employer then you will not be taxed if the cost of education is exceeding 1000 rupees per month then the actual cost minus 1000 rupees per month minus the amount paid by the employee will be taxed as value of the perquisite so again this is also another perquisite that is given to the employees finally the fifth one is free medical facility if medical bill in the name of the employee is reimbursed by the employer then that is a taxable perquisite for the employee so any medical bill that you have paid and the company has reimbursed that amount for you then the entire amount of bill will be taxable as a perquisite so these are the various perquisites that are taxable in the case of a specified employee so thank you students i hope you have understood all these rules regarding perquisites clearly only if you understand these rules you will be able to work out the sums without any difficulty without any problem so make sure you read it again and again and understand it clearly so that uh, you will be able to work out the sums correctly
Thank you, students.